There's audio. Look at that. Thanks, Mike. I don't know what happened. That was weird. I unplugged it and plugged it back in again. That happens sometimes with computers. They are pesky things. But anyways, what I was saying is welcome to the GM Toolbox on this lovely Friday evening. Uh, figured we'd have some fun tonight. We talk about um, you know Project Black Flag news and... I did a video this week on uh, artificial intelligence in uh, TTRPGs. I kind of want to get people's feedback on that. I was thinking not so much from a point of view of um, of like you know AI DMs kind of thing, um, or you know, not even uh, like I don't want to. I'm not looking to let's say like oh we, AI can replace writers or artists or something like that, but more like how we as uh, DMs and GMs, how we can use artificial intelligence to maybe supplement, you know, a little bit in our games and do some cool stuff in our games. So, uh, you know, we'll take a look at it. It's kind of some cool concepts. I am in IT. That is correct. I am an IT guy. So, how is everybody tonight? Anybody uh, got some games planned for this weekend, maybe, or anything cool like that? I uh, I wish I was playing. Well, I might play tomorrow night. We'll see what happens tomorrow night. But uh, I'm not running a game this weekend, unfortunately. I, I'm actually hanging out with my players tomorrow, but one of them is moving and I'm helping them move. So that's about it. But I hopefully will play tomorrow night. I don't know which character. I've got uh, two different campaigns with the same DM, different players. So it just depends on who can make it. So I've got my... Uh, my Goliath Barbarian character, and then I've got my uh, my Ranger uh, Gunslinger. So both of those are fun. I like the Gunslinger a lot. I'm like really, really enjoying that character. So maybe Sunday you're going to play? Cool, cool. I'm going to the Renaissance Fair on Sunday. That's what I'm doing Sunday. I'm dropping the kids off my parents, and me and my wife are going solo. We try to go twice a year. Uh, once by ourselves and once with the kids because we found when we go to the Ren Fair by ourselves We have a wonderful time and a great day when we go with the kids by the end of the day. We all want to kill each other So yeah, that's the plan You know if I can only go once I'd rather go with my just my wife honestly like I love my children dearly dearly, but I'd rather uh, I'd rather not go with them because Yeah kids that's why yeah, the Arizona Renaissance Fair is freaking awesome, too. So uh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, you know, we missed we only missed one year with the pandemic. Um, the year in 2020, uh, you know, lockdown didn't happen until March and we went in February to the Ren Fair. So we we got to go and uh, it was pretty cool. Hey, Tim Baker, thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so in 2020, uh, we got to go. And in 2021, it was still closed. And in 2022, we went back. So looking forward to 2023 Ren Fair. Yeah, ours has to be super like, you know, like in these months because it gets hot here quick. And like it goes like February through April. And by April, it can be getting pretty freaking warm. So um, I think this this might be the first weekend. This might be opening weekend. So it's probably going to be pretty freaking busy, but is it? Pre no, President's Day weekend is next weekend. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I don't know if there's anything I want to buy this year. Um, there's a one guy there that uh, sells like hand cut stone dice. Um, he's actually from Arizona, but he sets up. He's got like three or four booths at Gen Con every year, too. Uh, makes great dice. If you ever go to Gen Con, there's a coupon book and there's like a coupon book for like a, uh, in there, there's a free D six from this one vendor. That's him. So he's at our rent for every year. So he's got cool stuff. I bought a set of, of uh, God, what a uh, tiger's eye or something like that. I think it was dice. Uh, I was like 80 bucks for this set, but it's a nice set of dice. Um, you don't have, well, I was gonna say you don't have to be rich to live in Arizona, but it's getting expensive here now. It used to not be too bad. My pirate flag behind me is actually from the Ren Fair. I bought that at the Ren Fair. Uh, and funny enough is that Dice Vendor actually is in, set up, his shop is inside this like pirate ship, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's always a good time. I was looking at uh, drinking horns too, but they're so damn expensive. I'm probably better off buying one online than I would be to buy one at the Renaissance Fair, honestly, because they are, they're expensive. 
All right, we have a few people on. I was hoping to have a few more before we really got the ball rolling, but people are here. Um, so here's what I'm thinking. I want to do these lives on Tuesdays and on Fridays. So Tuesdays, I want to call, I'm going to call them TTRPG Tuesdays, where we'll focus on non D and D uh, TTRPGs and probably non Pathfinder, right? Um, so like other TTRPGs. So that's what we'll do on Tuesdays, TTRPG Tuesday. Fridays is going to be Fantasy Fridays, where we'll talk mostly D&D and uh, probably some Pathfinder and, you know, like maybe some other more fantasy type of systems as well if we want. But kind of D&D and Pathfinder on, on, on Fridays. So with that said, um, I would say, uh, you know, uh, welcome to uh, to the first uh, uh Fantasy Friday. I had a cool video planned for you guys, but unfortunately I didn't have it done in time. So uh, I don't have it right now. I will have it, but I don't have it yet. Uh, so that said, um, I was thinking, well, this is kind of where I wanted to talk about the AI stuff too, because I was playing, like if you watched my video today, you saw what I did with the shop uh, with AI, but I want to see what else we could do with it. I haven't played with it a ton, a ton, uh, but I have played with it. So um, it is pretty cool what you can do with it. Um, I was thinking maybe like a month we can try generating some random monsters with it or maybe, um, you know, some more magic items and then, you know, pop it in mid journey and see what we can do with the art and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, What would you want to try to see what we can make the AI do? Um, I don't want it to make it like right an adventure for me. Um, you know, it could probably generate like a random encounter for us. Um, but we just have to kind of feed it information, right? We just got to tell it kind of what we want. And then it will, it'll give us stuff. So what do you think? Um, give me a second here. Uh, let's see here. Where is it? I'm going to pull some stuff up for us. Um, where is that at? There it is. And then let's put this over here. And then let's see how this works. Let's see. Ready? Tell me if you guys hear this when this comes up. Um, uh, let's see. Let's see if it works. Uh, <laughs> give me one second. I was hoping to do this before the stream, but it took a little longer to prep. So, um, where is it at? Uh, da, 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 da. There it is. Okay. So, anyways, with that said, welcome to Fantasy Fridays. <laughs> That's my little intro. <laughs> That's what I got for you. I got that little intro. All right, so uh, let's take a look. Um, let me pull up. Uh, do I already have it open? Yeah, I do have it open. I'm gonna pull this up over here. Uh, I'm gonna kill this one. Verifying I'm human. All right. Okay. Let's head over. Dun, 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 dun. Now it doesn't want to come up. Technical difficulties. Hmm. There it is. Okay. Here we are. Chat GPT. So. Um, what should we try to make? Thank you. Did, it, did Could you hear the, the little video? Or could you just see it? All right. Uh, so let's say here, 
I just want to see what this thing can do. So we're going to tell it um, to I want to, let's create it. Let's see if we can create an original creature. So let's say um, generate an original D and D five E creature of CR three um, and type. Hmm. Let's do a, uh, what's something cool? Uh, monstrosity. No, I don't want to do monstrosity. Let's do, uh, let's do an ooze. Type ooze. Let's, let's give it that and see what it does. Uh, wait, generate an original 5e creature. Ooze. Uh, and show the full stat block because sometimes it gets a little wonky if you don't give it good directions. So let's see what it says. Here's the original CR3 used creature for Dungeon Dragons 5th edition. Gelatinous um, um, amoebia, amoebia, amoebia. CR3 type ooze, unaligned, armor class 8, hit points 68, speed 20 feet. We've got some stats. Immunities is poison and psychic. I spelled psychic wrong. Condition immunity, uh, condition immunities. Okay, it's got some blind sight. Can move through a space as narrow as one inch. It's got a slam. It's got an engulf. Uh, wow, that's actually pretty good. Not bad. What do you think? Uh, you know, here let me let me hide myself so you can read it. I'll hide my camera. So there you go. That's what it came up with. I wonder if I can, uh, let's see here. If I do this. That might be a little better. Now I, now I don't have to hide myself. So that's kind of cool. Um, so now let's do this. Describe what this creature looks like. Hmm. So let's see here. It's translucent, shapeless mass of gelatinous material. It, it is. It has a somewhat amorphous form, capable of flowing through and changing shape as it moves. Despite its lack of eyes and other sensory organs, the creature has an acute sense of its surroundings. Thanks to its blind sight, its translucent appearance makes it difficult to see in dimly lit areas, uh, which, combined with its ability to squeeze through tight space, makes it a formidable opponent. You know what I would do with this creature is I would probably give it an ability um, that uh, you get or maybe or maybe make like or you know what actually I would make it proficient or even expertise in stealth. I think that would be good. I was gonna say maybe uh, perception checks to spot it uh, are at disadvantage, but I think just uh, expertise in stealth would be kind of cool. What's its dex though? It's it's got such a low dex score. Um, so it would end up with a plus two, a plus two to stealth. That's kind of cool though. Maybe if it doesn't move, it's invisible or something like that. I don't know, but it's a cool creature. It's a cool idea. It's kind of an invisible ooze. Um, let's see here. What if I said, um, Give me a uh, a physical description of the creature that uh, that can be used in Mid Journey. Uh, to generate art. Let's see what it does. All right, so we're gonna take that. Where's my mid journey here? I have mid journey somewhere. Uh, mid journey, mid journey, mid journey. Where are you? Uh, where the freak is mid? There it is. All right, so I'm gonna go over to mid journey. I am going to. Not that. Too many windows open. Uh, let's see here. 
I'm going to copy this just as is. All right. Do I have, uh, let's see here. I thought I had Discord set up on here for you guys. Uh, social. Maybe not. All right. Window capture. We'll call this Discord. There we go. All right, I'm gonna just, actually, there we go. I'm just gonna paste that description right in here. Uh, oh, sorry, I gotta do slash imagine. And then I'm gonna paste that in. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna add a couple things here. D&D &D monster. Did I just for uh, All right, just D and D monster. Let's. I mean, that's it. I just wanted to see what it does. All right. While we wait for that, what else? Uh, let's see, Mike, you said. Uh, sorry, I didn't realize it would ding when I sent you. Oh, that's fine. It's not a big deal. We just have to give it a minute. It takes a little bit. These things move fast. See, look, you can already see it kind of coming up with something. It's kind of got a greenish color in this one. Well, it is a translucent mass of acid that resembles jiggling jelly. So it's it, its surface is smooth and undiluted. All right, I think it's done now. Let's see. Oh, oh there it is. All right. Um, I kind of like this one. So we can upscale this one. We'll give that a minute. It's neat how this works, though. It's AI talking to AI, and I kind of find that neat. You know, it's just kind of a, a cool concept. Um, you know, this this is kind of cool, just for like, again, you at your home game, trying to come up with something. You know, we can also do it while we're waiting. Why don't we do this too? So since we're waiting, let's go. Uh, well, actually, we'll, we'll give it a second because I don't want to um, miss it, it finishing its job here. It's still waiting to start, though. All right, we'll. We'll do this. Let's go ahead and um, bring this down here. All right, I'll hide the Discord for a minute and let's go in here and we'll say um, generate a, uh, let's see. Magic item for D and D five E of rare uh, or type five E type rare. Um, I don't know. Try to think of how to best word this. Generate a rare magic item for D and D five E, um, and we'll say it should be a sword. I want it to be a sword. All right. Mm, oh, and let's say we want it for um, sword. It should be a sword for a. Mm, let's do for a bard. Melody's Edge, wondrous item. I think our our art's ready too. All right, so uh, let's see. Bailey's Edge is a gleaming longsword with a slender curved blade made of shimmering silver. The hilt is adorned with intricate carvings and inlaid with the gems that pulse with a soft light. The sword has the following properties. So right here, I just generated a, a weapon for us. So if you're just stumped, you can't find a weapon for your bard, here it is. And then I can even probably take this. Um, this is a longsword. So let's head back over to... Uh, Discord real quick. So here's our image, by the way. So that's pretty cool. That's what it, that's what we got from that. 
let's do another one real quick. Slash imagine. Let's put Melody's Edge in there and just see what we get. I want to see what it does. I'm going to run out of my free, uh, my, I, when I, at some point I'm going to have to pay for uh, mid, uh, mid journey if I want to keep using it. Cause you only can do like 25 or something per month on a free account. That's really not a lot. Like we can burn those up tonight. <laughs> Kind of like that one right there that it's doing the bottom left or even this one's cool you know what else it could be this could be cool for actually that would be really handy is generating uh uh icon art for uh like my foundry stuff oh wow look at those those actually all look pretty cool hmm i do like this I like that a lot. It's kind of almost, you know, these other ones like scabbard. That one's all right. I think I like this one though for the bard. That's pretty cool. Let's upscale that one. That's pretty neat. I feel like I want the music back on. I'm gonna put the music on in the background and just kind of leave it low. If it gets too loud, let me know. I don't think it'll be too loud, but if it is too loud, let me know. All right, let's see here. Still waiting on that job to start. So what do you guys think? I mean, like, has anybody else messed with, uh, I know Michael, I know you've messed with uh, with uh chat gpt has anybody else like messed with it or done anything with it to um like for your games i just find it kind of just fun to play with it's a neat concept i like just scrolling through this and looking at other people's art that's cool check that out that's cool like druid the queen of all night i feel like this is somebody like doing what we did using chat gpt for it my job start yet yeah, it's crazy how fast uh, stuff just keeps coming here how many people are using it there it is check that out man that's super cool that is a neat sword I'm gonna save this I want to save this image because this I, I actually have a bar to my party um, we'll just call this uh, bard sword All right. Well. So that's me messing with AI. I don't know. I kind of like it. I think it's neat. Um, you know, I don't think it's a replacement for a real artist or a real writer, but I think it, it could be cool just, you know, for some inspiration or some ideas when you're stumped, you know, or you need something super quick. You throw some stuff in there and there you go. You're good to go. All right. Well, what do you say we talk about some Project Black Flag? Uh, it is uh, Black Flag Friday. So, you know what that means? It's time for Black Flag Friday with GM Toolbox. <laughs> So, uh, Cobalt Press did their little uh, announcement today, uh, as they promised they would do on Fridays, and uh, we got some uh, Project Black Flag news. Uh, I'm gonna go home over to the site here and pull it up, and we'll take a look at what they uh, what they got going on. So, uh, you know, they had their all hands on deck announcement today, and uh, definitely some cool stuff happening there. Um, let's head over and take a look. So basically, they mentioned a couple of things. First, they have a whole bunch of digital partners that the, you know that they're going to be partnering with uh, for uh, Project Black Flag. So we're seeing all of our VTTs, we're seeing Shard, we're seeing Roll Twenty, we're seeing Fantasy Grounds, we're seeing Foundry, uh, World Anvil. Big one that I really you know, noticed was Demiplane. 
<coughs> excuse me. Um, for those of you who don't know, Demi Plain is actually where a bunch of the people from D and D Beyond went. Uh, with after, prior, but very much during the buyout of of D and D Beyond uh, from Wizards of the Coast. So. A bunch of people, including like Adam Bradford, who was like the community manager. He's the guy who used to do all the lives and everything. Um, you know, they all went over and started Demi Plane, and Demi Plane is super cool because it is, um, you know, kind of going to be a D and D Beyond for all the other systems, including they have what's on there is called Nexus, which is going to be the Pathfinder kind of D and D Beyond. Uh, and, you know, it already looks super cool. Um, but you know, like Airbender is on there. There's a whole bunch of games on there, and it looks like Black Flag is going to eventually be on there. Uh, we also see Alchemy on there, which Alchemy, if you don't know, is not a virtual tabletop, but more of a digital tool to help you with more theater of the mind, or even just your home games if you're using you know maps and stuff like that. But it's a way that you can throw images up and have certain elements. Um, uh, you know, uh, digital elements, you know, supplement your game, but it's not a virtual tabletop. Still, it's a really cool tool. Big things, though. Uh, once again, they're reiterating how Project Black Flag will be compatible with 5th edition, um, but they're going to sharpen it. Uh, you know, we're going to see some, you know, mechanics streamlined and things like that. Uh, so that sounds pretty cool. Uh, obviously, we're going to have all of our dice. Uh, now, they did mention Project Black, or you can expect Project Flag core book of 400 monsters. Now, that's a big book. That's the size of Tome of Beasts, right? That's going to be a big book. Um, so my guess is that it, this is going to basically be like all of your SRD monsters type of thing, like the stuff that we no longer will be using under a new system that we had under 5e, like our, you know, your, your goblin and your troll and your orc and your you know hobgoblin and your bugbear and all those basic creatures will be in there and then a whole bunch of new ones and my i'm, I'm hoping they'll do something like their version of a beholder and their version of a mind flare would be kind of cool right um so i'm hoping we see some really neat stuff in there but that's gonna be a big book then i would imagine and i don't know right i'm this is me guessing but i'm thinking one or two uh core books um of uh it would be, uh, you know, like either a single core book, kind of like what like Pathfinder's core book, uh, or I wonder if they'll do more of like a player's guide, DM's or GM's guide kind of deal. I don't know. I'm really not sure, you know, the approach they'll take. So I would imagine that we're gonna have a monster book and at least one other like rule book, maybe two rule books. I don't know. And that'll be the initial set. And then, you know, after that, they'll keep releasing stuff, obviously, but it's going to be you know, under the orc license. So any publisher can release stuff for it. And it's really, you know, I mean, there is like, we, I keep talking about the level up advanced 5e. And I'm sure this is going to be very similar, you know, in ways to that. But because it's Cobalt Press and because of the time, because of the orc license, because of all those other things, I really feel like this might end up being the Pathfinder of 5e, like that next big thing that really just takes off. So that should be super, super cool. Um, the other thing they talk about here is talents and backgrounds. So a new talent system helps players customize their character with potent magic, martial, or technical advantages. Kind of curious. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, they're talking about compatibility with 5e. So I can't imagine them completely taking apart the way classes work. But I can see them supplementing it with these other things. Like, will talents be more like feats? Um, will they be things that you get in addition to your class is going to be like a talent tree that at certain levels you can pick something like it would be cool if you would add these talents in so that you can use them with your existing 5e classes right whether you want to pull something from your player's handbook or if you want to do something from midgard heroes handbook or toma heroes or you know whatever other 5e class book supplement you have from any publisher if the talents can somehow supplement um as opposed to replace those things uh, and same thing with backgrounds, right? So I, I, I'm, I don't know what they have planned there. We're gonna see all this in the first wave of playtest, but it does sound, uh, it does sound pretty cool. Uh, the race and heritage system, though, I really like this idea that, you know, and I think this is what Watsi was trying to achieve when they were, when they, you know, with Tasha's, when they're like, throw your plus two wherever you want, throw your plus one wherever you want. That's cool. Um, because not everybody's the same, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But 
let's let's dive into that a little bit more. Let's let's use that. So a race is going to have racial abilities. A dwarf is going to have dark vision regardless of where they're born, things like that. So you're going to have these racial abilities, and then you're going to have these heritage abilities, and you can mix and match. Um, so it's not just dumping your plus two and your plus one wherever you want. It's like maybe maybe the races will have every race will have a plus one to something, but then your plus two comes from your heritage, and you get to pick that. So that's quite possible. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, we got a super chat from Mike. Uh, Mike uh, says, we all need to spread the word about how good Cobalt Press is. The race heritage sounds cool. Yeah, I mean, um, they got so many. They got, what was it, 15,000, 20,000 people to sign up for this playtest. It's going to be nuts. And that's just the people who signed up for playtesting. This is going to be big. I really, really think it's going to be big. And I really hope a lot of other publishers pu decide to publish stuff for Black Flag. I, I really, really hope this, like, I mean, Cobalt Press is already big, but I hope this puts them up to, like, Paizo big or bigger. <laughs> you know? Uh, it would just be awesome to see them really just blow up and then, you know, hire me. <laughs> I'll come work for you guys. I'll move to Washington and work for Cobalt Press. That would be amazing. I want to do that. If you're listening, Wolfgang, uh, or Alex, um, let's see here. So you choose a standard match uh, or of race and heritage, or a more traditional mix, uh, uh, or a more traditional character or mix and match to craft a unique origin. So this all sounds super cool. I cannot wait for playtest. I guess it's gonna be. I think they said late February. Um, I think they said late February in the last one, and right now it just says February. Um, so uh, I believe the new uh, I don't I I think the new community manager Zach might be running this playtest. I don't know. Normally Ben McFarland, who has written a bunch of stuff for Cobalt Press, runs a lot of the playtest. Uh, but I don't think he's running this one. I'm not sure. Um, so I'm pretty sure Zach, uh, the new community manager, will be running it. So I can't wait to see what he does with it. Zach, hit me up, man. Uh, you know I want to I want to get the word out. Um, Mike says, I would like to see them bring back the negative one uh, to one ability. Uh, but then again, I'm old school. You know, yeah. Um, I don't know about that. Like, I, How necessary is that? Um, I think that the standard array solves that on its own. Um, I don't ever. There was no standard array back in the day, right? Uh, you just rolled your stats. So when you're rolling your stats, a negative one could do that uh you know be pretty good um i feel like the standard array is, is pretty solid as it is um but like should elves yeah i, I feel like it eliminates I, I feel like the negative one is counter to what they're trying to um to do uh with the whole you know any like because no, should all elves be dexy and you know have bad con should that should they be like I don't know. I don't know. That's what's kind of weird. Yeah, there wasn't a standard array back in the day. You just rolled. Um, and then if you rolled really bad, your character became a farmer and you rolled a new character. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm not sold on the whole negative one thing. Um, I feel like it, make, it just makes you people go, oh, uh, like, I don't know. I think people are, are kind of more looking for power now. So roll straight down, then decide what race class. Uh, we didn't roll straight down. I, I think roll straight down was uh, a first edition thing. A second edition, it was we, we did 46, drop the lowest, and put them in any order you want. Um, Jonathan Nelson of AAW, though, to this day, he does 3D6 straight down. And he just kills me anytime I try to play a game. Uh, and he's like, if he's in a DM, he's like, 3D6 straight down. I'm like, oh, God, that sounds brutal. You become grog. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <coughs> grog also had insane strength and constitution, despite his six intelligence. I like playing smart characters, though. Um, I like playing characters that you know can like, I don't know, deduce stuff. Like I like, I like wizards. Um, I'm not. I don't love artificers, but I do like that they're an intelligence class. I I really. 
I hope Black Flag has some. Uh, well, I guess they are going to have new races because we have the Witch and we've got the uh, the Urge. Uh, let's look at that real quick. Actually, uh, let me see. Where did I put those? You know what? It's on their site. Um, give me a second here. Let me pull up. Let's pull up uh, Kickstarter real quick. Um, Deep Magic 2. I don't know where everyone is. I guess it's Friday. Maybe Friday won't be a good day. Damn, dude. Deep Magic is up to $651,000. God. God. All right. Uh, oh, you know what? I had the play test. That's why. I had the play test material. I can't share that, unfortunately, on stream. I can look at it, though. So hold on. Let me let me go back to my normal view so I can't show anything on the screen. Um, let me get into my email. Because I do have the play test from Deep Magic. So I have the witch. I'm just curious if she is uh, an intelligence, um, an intelligence-based Let's see here. Uh, you know, it's going to all be from Ben. So Ben, I should have Ben on the show one night. That'd be good. All right. Here we go. So I've got, here we go. Here's the witch play packet. Um, so let's see here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Creating a witch. Quick build. Okay. Uh, no, she's charisma. The witch is charisma based. I think she's going to be more like a warlock. So here's the urge. The urge is... Uh, the urge is intelligence-based. So we do have a new intelligence-based character in Deep Magic 2. That's exciting. So let's see here. We, uh, blending the arcane and the divine, the urge revels in the unbridled wonders of magic regardless of their source. They strive to refine their magical abilities driven by their quest to accomplish even greater feats of spellcasting. Many consider the urge to be the epitome of what it means to be a spellcaster. Although they the many or although many the urge worship a specific deity, often a god or goddess of magic, others choose instead to uh, venerate personifications of magical forces or perhaps even magic itself. Uh, the urges are obsessed with unquenchable thirst. Uh, to further their understanding and mastery of spellcasting and magic. The urge lies in the ability to draw upon and combine and manipulate multiple forms of magical powers to overcome any obstacle or danger. So it sounds like they basically combined divine and arcane magic. They are like a crossbreed. Um, they have subclasses called devo uh, devotions. That sounds pretty neat. The AAW um, Kickstarter is also doing really good. Uh, they've they've kind of crushed it. Theirs is at um, uh, let me see something. Tome of Heroes uh, Kickstarter. Um, let me see here. Um, tome or mini dungeon tome. That's what I mini dungeon tome. Uh, so mini dungeon tome is at twenty five thousand. Sorry, I'm getting more notif. One of my groups is chatting. I didn't mute all my notifications. Um, notifications. Okay. So. Yeah, they're at uh they're at a hundred or they're at twenty five thousand, um, and that's in what four days, so that's twelve hundred percent funded. And then the uh the Nord one, the Oracle one, uh, Oracle, uh, Oracle, uh, Oracle character generator. That one is at. Uh, 177,000. So all the Kickstarters are doing really good. DA, what about DA? What's DA? Slow night, man. Maybe Friday night's not the night. 
I thought Friday would have been a better night. But maybe people are gaming or going out and actually have lives, unlike me. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's right. We're not going to do a long live tonight anyways. I started working out this week, and I'm sore. I'm going to hit the hot tub tonight. That's the plan. And I've got work to do um, on rope work. I should show you guys some of the rope work. It's super cool. Uh, I wonder if I'm allowed to. Let me see here. I think I can give you guys a sneak peek of what I'm working on. Let me pull it up. Let's pull it up. I'll show you the one map or the two maps that I'm working on right now. It's nothing spoilery. It's just kind of cool. All right, let me pull this over here. All right. Okay, so this is one of the maps in Roltmark that I've been working on. Pay no attention to the chat. That's crap. So uh, this is the top of the Spire of Voltmark in the ruins. You'll notice the stairs here are caved in. And so there's four versions of this map. There's the stairs caved in, the stairs dug out during the day, and then there's the same two maps at night. So I create a little macro here. And I can choose which one. So right now we're looking at caved in day, uh, uh, day here's cave or stairs dug out at uh, during the day so you see here just clicking that button changes it we're still on the same scene though now if we want to go to the night with it caved in there we go we got the campfires going and everything and then we have the oops, wrong one uh, and then we've got the night with the stairs dug out so just a quick macro lets you switch between these then Rotmark also has animated versions of maps so uh, same thing. It's supposed to be the same location. It's going to look a little different. It's you know a different artist interpretation of the map, but we've got this animated map. Here it is during the day, and then you saw the night one, but I'll bring it back. So here's night, and then we also have night with torches lit up. So I just create these macros. So when I have the same map but different versions of the same map I do these macros in order to um, you know uh, uh, switch between them without having to switch scenes it's kind of nice and then if we go back to this one you'll see too like I've got the, the markings on the map for the GM as well which are all hidden but I think it's neat I like it and then I'll show you guys here uh, one of the journals so since we're looking at this, here's the rope work surface. And then you can see here, we've got hard modes. We've got description of what the area looks like, art. These are these uh, kind of at a glance sections that give you a brief overview as the GM. Some foundry notes, tables. So you can roll right here if you wanted to, or you can click here and pull off the table. Same thing with this one. So different options. I let people kind of pick the way they like to play it. But yeah, that's rope work. It's going to be cool. It's going to be a really great adventure. I've been putting a lot of work into this one. I want to run this for some people. So, you know, once we get memberships going, if people want to uh, participate and play, um, yeah, I'll run rope work for some people. This thing is deadly, though. This this is literally designed as, like, a death trap of a dungeon. It is super hard, uh, but it is super cool. Um, I'm, I already know how I'm going to tie this into my campaign, but I do want to run it for some others, too, because it's it's too good to not run. It's about a level, I want to say, like a level eight, I think. Let me look. 
Um, does it say here? I don't know if it says it or not. Uh, no, it doesn't say it there. I think it's like level, like it, it's a tier two. It's definitely a tier two. A word of warning. Word of warning, Roltmark is a challenge and deadly adventure intended for veteran players. Only the truly skilled and fearless should dare venture into this place. Make sure to read the entirety of the module carefully before running it. Roltmark's challenges are complex and lethal. Some groups enjoy the constant looming threat of character death or genuinely hard and brutal challenges. For those groups, the hardcore mode options in the sidebar allow the GM to increase the individual challenges of Roltmark even further. So there are like, you don't have to do it. You don't have to run the whole campaign in, in, in hard mode. You can just run specific things that have like hard mode options, which are kind of cool. So I think it'll be neat. I'm looking forward to it. There's there's also this whole ancient language. Let me go back real quick. I'll show you this. Uh, where is it? Um, I think it's under view here. Where is it? Nope. Uh, here. Nope. Uh, synopsis. Yes, here. So um, Right here, you can see like this is the spire. Those are the ruins on top, but you can see this strange language. So you'll actually see this language around, and you'll have to figure out how to read it. And uh, you know, you have to like decode it. You know, there's ar you know, archaeology comes in handy in this campaign. There's different methods to decode. I don't want to spoil it, but it's cool. It's super super cool. All right, so we covered some Project Black Flag. We covered uh, 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 some of the AI stuff, but I check out the AI video I posted today because I, I really liked it. I thought it was a, it was a fun video to make. It's an interesting concept. I'm kind of curious of people's feedback on it. Um, oh, you know what I wanted to talk about um, was uh, Demiplane a little bit because Demiplane is pretty cool and it's a future. Um, so let me go back to here. Okay, that's not one I could open. There we go. Uh, blog and here. Okay. So let's head back over to my screen here. We're going to go check out uh, Demiplane. So Demiplane covers all sorts of platforms, um, but you will notice right here on the right that's the cover for Creature Codex. So I think it's you know kind of coming soon here. Um, So you can like join groups and you know there's free games and there's paid games and stuff like that. It's all you know for the most part most of it's gonna be theory. It's not it's not a VTT. Uh, it's not a VTT. Yet. Um, I think it's gonna be more like a D and D Beyond type of, of tool. Uh, I'm still kind of learning it. But Nexus uh, does have character sheets. Um, but you'll see like here's Avatar, here's Marvel, here's Vampire the Mas Masquerade. Um, you've got a few different games here. But if we go to like the Pathfinder one. Um, you, know, you can buy books and stuff on here. Uh, character management's in closed alpha still, so we can't see that. Um, but you do have access to like the compendiums here. So you, there's all your classes, your ancestries, your archetypes, backgrounds, spells, feats, creatures. Um, you know, we can go in, take a look. So if we want to pull up one of these creatures, there's our stat blocks and everything. Uh, there is dice rolling. Uh, somewhere in here I, like i said I, I literally have not played with it yet so still learning but it looks cool uh and then if we go back to nexus so if we want to go to avatar uh same thing um all sorts of stuff we have the digital library playbooks character tools coming in 2023 so they're going to have character sheets um we've got check out vampire uh character yeah see they're, they're playing character tools for a lot of these so you know they're still fairly new but it, it's like literally like uh um uh, you know uh adam uh bradford and a bunch of the people from D, D beyond left and came over here so you know it's going to be a good tool because um you know they did a good like when they were managing D, D beyond it was really awesome uh i'm seeing here like 
Abomination Vault and a bunch of other stuff for Pathfinder 2. Um, let's go back into the Pathfinder 2 stuff. So let's see here, digital library. We go in here. You can connect your Paizo account too to unlock uh, the PDF or Paizo.com for any book you purchase on Pathfinder Nexus or to get a discount on the Pathfinder Nexus version for any PDF you already own uh, on Paizo.com. So uh, yeah, that's kind of cool. You can connect your accounts. And then here's all the books you can buy on here. Here's the primer. Let's see what this looks like. So here, here you go. This is the, the primer book. Um, that's pretty cool. It's smooth, man. It looks nice. It looks really, really nice. So Demi Plane, I think, is going to be pretty awesome, and it's going to play a big part in Black Flag when it comes out. So another thing to be excited about. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Well, we've had an hour here, and it's a slow night, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep going. Um, I gotta get up early tomorrow and help a friend move and hang out. So, I appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, join me on Tuesday for TTRPG Tuesday. Uh, I'm looking at a couple of different things right now. I don't know what I want to cover yet on Tuesday. Um. I might look more into the Avatar one because we talked about Avatar a lot last time. Um, so I feel like there might be a little bit of interest in it. Uh, I also want to look at... Uh, I definitely want to look at Call of Cthulhu at some point because uh, I'm really interested in playing that. Obviously Cypher, but those are bigger systems and they're going to take a little bit more time to uh, to, to break down and kind of play. Um, anyone else going to start play testing? Um what do you mean anyone else? Um, I mean, uh, as far as Black Flag goes? I mean, I think playtest starts later this month, so I don't know exactly when, but hopefully soon. I, I'm hoping in the next two weeks or so would be great. Like, if we had it by mid-February, I'd be super excited. Because I definitely, um, you know, if it's just going to be character creation, you know, we'll do some character creation on here. Um and uh and play with it and see what it's like um oh if anybody in here is play testing yeah i mean i think a lot of people want to be play testing but yeah we'll see like once they start giving us some adventures and stuff uh that'd be kind of cool to to get some people on and you know actually run an adventure with some of these characters um i'd be kind of curious if we got enough to make characters to then just take those characters and run like a 5e adventure with them and see how it goes. See what the balance is like. That'd be kind of neat. Like, you know, if we made a couple level 3 characters using these new things and then ran a level 3 adventure, would it be easier or harder? You know? Or the same? So that's kind of the question. But we'll take a look. Uh, as, soon as, as soon as it becomes available, we'll take a look. But Tuesday, I want to look at, you know, what... I'm thinking uh, Airbender because it's a smaller system and I'll have time to look at it because I got a pretty busy weekend. Um, and then uh, I want to look at Call of Cthulhu. I want to look at Cypher. I want to look at, uh, um, uh, I don't know, a few other ones. Blades in the Dark. Uh, Blades in the Dark. And there's a bunch of them I have. Um, what else? I have my list somewhere around here. Is this my list? I don't remember where I made my list. Um... No, I didn't sell work notes. Oh, it's in this book. We got the dragon book. Um, let's see here. What do we have in here? Oh, Iron Sworn was another one. Obviously, Powered by the Apocalypse. I still haven't found Fallout in New Las Vegas. And then I'll see about that um, that uh, steampunk one, the uh, Subversion. If I can like do a little bit with that in the lives, that'd be kind of fun. Because that, that does look cool. It would be fun a fun way to help them promote it. So we'll take a look. We'll see what's going on. All right. I guess uh, that's probably it for now, guys. So uh, I'll catch you all on Tuesday. Later.